Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And today I'm going to talk about uh, part of my dissertation in chapter one. Uh, this is a, a study that tries to identify sargassum accumulations along the coastline using remote sensing. And this is uh, the exposure component of a bigger social vulnerability, social ecological vulnerability assessment that we are conducting. So a little bit of background first. Uh, sargassum, pelagic sargassum, is a brown algae that lives its entire life floating on the sea surface. And it forms dense mats that serve as important habitat for many organisms. Historically, uh, you could found uh, sar sargassum in the Sargasso Sea. But since 2011, a new generation region has uh, established in the North Equatorial Situation region here. And, uh, it, and it has been uh, recurrently uh, entering through, through the currents and winds to the Caribbean Sea. Um, it has become a new norm. There are plenty of impacts that uh, occur when sargassum arrives to the coast. And both on the on the ecological system and on the not on the human system. So in the ecological system, we see that as soon as sargassum starts to accumulate, it starts to decompose, and that changes the the water quality. So it, it reduces oxygen, changes the pH, and that uh, can lead to seagrass die to coral mortality and also other species mortalities, for example, sea turtles. On the other hand, in the social system, we see a lot of impacts in the tourism industry. Uh, you don't see any any more these crystal clear waters, but you see these brown areas uh, that are actually smelly. And also in the fish, the fishery industry has been affected uh, since sargassum gets uh, entangled in the fishing gear and also in the propellers. The human health is also affected since um, some people are, are allergic to, to the touch of it, but also when it decays, it expels uh, hydrogen sulfide and ammonia, and that is uh, toxic for, for our respiratory system. So, so far, um, most of the, of the efforts to detect sargassum has been conducted in offshore waters. And here are two examples. The one on top is the one of the optical oceanographic laboratory of USF. Uh, and the one below is the one of NOAA AOML. They use different sensors. Uh, for example, the one on top uses MODIS satellite and the, and the one below is a Sentinel-3. So that, uh, that means that they have different spatial resolution, but still the, the pixel size is a little bit big. And, and they use different algorithms. But what, what they have in common is that both mask out coastal areas. And, so, and this is where most of the impacts is occurring. So we, uh, we identified this data gap and we wanted to, to, to address this. There are plenty of challenges related to using uh, sargas to using remote sensing on, in the coastline. And one of them is that as soon as sargassum starts to arrive, it starts to decompose and that changes the spectral signature of sargassum. And that turns it whitish, whitish as you can see in the picture. It, then it creates a lot of dissolved organic matter and that changes the, the color of the water too. And, it, uh, and you can see there that it uh, creates the sargassum brown type. Another thing to consider is the spatial resolution. So these are the same area uh, with two different sensors. And you can see that Sentinel-2 does a way better job at, 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 at uh, differentiating between the different uh, things in the, in the coastal area. So that is something important to So the overall purpose of this uh, research was uh, to provide information for the management and decision-making processes uh, re regarding sargassum accumulations on the coast. And this part specifically, the first chapter, is about developing a method for using satellite data to identify these accumulations in the coastline and also to assess the spatial and temporal dynamics of these uh, hotspots of accumulation. 
The study area is in Puerto Rico, uh, in the Caribbean Sea, uh, specifically in La Palmera Nature Reserve. This is a, a very interesting and complex area. It has a lot of keys, uh, coral reefs, it has mangrove, even a uh, luminescent bay. It's very important for tourism and also for fisheries. So what, what we, how, how we did this? We, we use Google Earth Engine. This is an online platform that allows you to process big amounts of data, spatial data in the cloud. And we use Sentinel-2 multispectral instrument uh, data from 2015 to, to present. We develop a multi-index approach that incorporates 16 different vegetation and water quality indexes. And we apply a random forest supervised classification. Uh, so for a supervised classification, we need training data. And I'm going to explain how we got that training data and validation data too. We went to the field uh, the same day that the satellite passed, and we were able to collect uh, 18 scenes of, of data. And we randomly assigned two thirds of those scenes to training the model and one third to validating the model. We realized that there were some classes that had few uh, representation in the, in the data, so in the field data, so we also included some uh, field, uh, some visually interpreted data too, and we also randomly assign that to, to either training or validating the model. <clears throat> so going back to this slide, the final step was to analyze the temporal and spatial dynamics of hotspots of accumulation. So let's go to the results. We were able not only to detect fresh sargassum as previous efforts have done, but we were able to detect decomposing sargassum and also sargassum brown type. This is an example. Here you can see, if, you, if I don't know if you can see it really, but there's a little bit of fresh sargassum entering. This is an image from Sentinel-2. Uh, but now I'm going to show you the classification product, and you can now clearly see the fresh sargassum entering and accumulating. You can also see decomposing sargassum in gray and sargassum brown type in yellow. We assess the accuracy of the, of the model, and we, what, what I'm showing you right now is the field data uh, that we use for, for, for the validation of the model. And we, we got a very high accuracy, overall accuracy of 93%. And you can see that the three sargassum classes had also high producer and user's accuracy. And these are measures of how well the, uh, the reality aligns with the, the, the mapping product that we developed. And the other training data that we use, sorry, validation data that we use, uh, the interpreted data had even a higher uh, overall accuracy. Okay, so let's go now to the spatial and temporal dynamics. Um, we conducted a persistent analysis, and this means that we uh, assess which was the most frequent uh, class throughout the whole time series in the same in, in each pixel, and we. It, we did this in order to, to identify where were the hotspots of accumulation. And we define a hotspot of sargassum accumulation as an area where fresh sargassum and also sargassum brown type persisted throughout the whole time series. And we were able to identify those areas. I know it's very uh, far away, so you cannot see it, but believe me, it's there. Those, of two, those two are persisted uh, throughout the whole time series. So now uh, I'm going to show you the, the, the graph of these two hotspots. What you're seeing here is the monthly maximum area for fresh sargassum for the two accumulation hotspots. And one of the things that we can see is that there is a seasonality and that that, that seasonality becomes even stronger through, through time. So we were expecting to see that there's more sargassum during summer months. That's something that we know already. But also we see that 2018 was a, a, the highest a year we had the maximum of sargassum. That's also a, 
something that we observe in other areas in the Caribbean. And now you see decomposing sargassum in white. And it follows more or less the same pattern uh, because it, it, it just takes some days for sargassum to start to decompose. So that's something that we also expect to see. But now let's see sargassum brown type. And this is more interesting, I think. Uh, it also follows this seasonality, but there is a phase shift towards the right. And let's focus on 2018. You see that there is a lot of fresh and decomposing sargassum, and sargassum brown type starts to appear some months after that. Some months after that. And it peaks, a, it peaks at the beginning of next year. So what this is showing us is that there is a, that the impacts of sargassum juice does not only occur during summer months, but throughout the whole year. And these have implications for the social ecological vulnerability of this community. So to conclude, uh, we were able to develop a method that accurately classifies uh, three types of, of, of expression of sargassum. The temporal and spatial dynamics shows that the impacts are occurring during the, the, the whole year. And the next step will be to, to text this method in other, in other areas in Puerto Rico and also in the Caribbean. So with that, I would like to thank all the people and entities that have helped, including NOAA Press, collaborators in Puerto Rico, also Sigran Puerto Rico, and obviously CCME for making this possible. Okay. Thank you. Are there any efforts to be physically removing the sargassum from these coastal communities? Uh, yes. So, yeah, that's a big uh, problematic, a big issue. Uh, yeah, there are efforts. Uh, some depend on where you are at and what are the resources you have. Uh, there are some uh, places that they have uh, 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 removed sargassum using uh, machinery, heavy machinery. Some use manual removal. Uh, there are some that have tried to put some barrier uh, on the water to prevent it to, to accumulate, but there are very a lot of legal aspects that need to be considered, and that is actually my third chapter. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at, uh, at that uh, to see where are, how, which are the options uh, that, that will follow you know, legal, uh, the legal uh, regime that, it, that is, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. And we can, uh, yeah, if you have a question, please, uh, find her, right? Great. Right.